Hey guys, Mini Wargamer Mike here, and today I'm going to introduce you to freehanding details. In particular, we're going to freehand the standard of this Black Art Corsair. Before you start painting freehand, you need to have at least an idea of what it is you want to freehand. Drawing it out is always a really good idea. Because basically, if you can't draw something out, chances are pretty good you're not going to be able to paint it freehand either. Some people can paint, but they're not necessarily good at drawing, but chances are you're probably going to be a little bit good at both, or really bad at both. So what I want to do is I want to do a Kraken type symbol. And you really want to just rough out the basic shapes so you know kind of what you're going to do. Doesn't need to look perfect here, this is really just your sort of idea. And if you guys have seen the Dark Elf units before, this looks a lot like the Kraken that shows up on some of their units. There's probably a reason for that. I'm going to say this part doesn't have to be perfect, it's just to give you a general idea of what you're going to be painting. Okay, so I'm going to have a symbol, something like that. I'm going to want that to appear on both sides of the standard. Obviously, we'll just do one side at a time. Now, obviously, I've also drawn it way bigger than this is, but that's okay. This is just to give us an idea. That's what I'm trying to aim for. So first thing we need to do is I don't want the standard to be white. So we're going to paint it, and I'm just going to skip ahead this part, but I'm going to paint it using Reaper Imperial Purple. It's a very royal shade of purple, and it'll just make an awesome base color for this standard. So I'll be back in a minute with a painted banner. Okay, so we now have the banner base coated in purple, and so what we're going to do now is mix up a little bit of Reaper Leather White with some Flow Improver to thin it down, and we're going to use that to start planning out, basically roughing in, like you were sketching with a pencil, the edges of this shape. I'm going to use an old blister pack and shake up the paint. I just need a couple drops for this. You can see the paint right there. I'm going to add an equal amount of Flow Improver. I'm going to take my liner brush and just mix that up. And we're going to use this to paint on the thin details. You want to make sure you can just draw really thin lines with it. Just like that. So this is ready to use. So what we want to do is we want to look at the shape we're planning. And just looking at this, obviously we don't want to go right to the edges of the banner. So we want to basically plan to have a certain amount of gap around it. And when we look at this particular banner, we also have these sort of, these little curvy decorative shapes. We probably want to kind of ignore a little bit of this as if it's margin we don't want to work with. So what I'm going to do is just kind of rough in some corners really quick so I know where I'm working. So I don't want the paint to go past about here or about here. And then same thing, we don't want to go maybe below there and probably not above there. So sort of have a little square we're going to be trying to paint within. And looking at the shape again, now this one has a really clearly defined center line. So we're actually going to start by painting this in first. And just looking at the overall shape in general, you can see that the eyes are basically about halfway. And so the round part of this sort of egg shape is just a little bit below that. So we're going to rough in the egg in this little point first, and then we'll start with the lower tentacles, just to give us the general shape we're going to work from. So we want the top of that point to be right here. And then the bottom of that round part, probably ending about there. Now this is, like I say, this is just like sketching with a pencil. Right now we're just roughing in shapes. So don't worry if they're sloppy, if the paint's in the wrong spot. We're really just getting some general guidelines. So the point is you can always go back and paint your purple back over something anyway. Okay, so now let's get the first tentacle in here. And I want them to sort of bend a little bit at the bottom. And same thing on the other side. And so far this looks, by most standards, really, really bad. But it'll look pretty awesome when we're done. This is just like the sketching stage of working with a pencil drawing. It's okay to have a lot of rough lines right now. So we'll bring in our next tentacle. And it's sort of about 45 degree to the first one. And just same thing on the other side. I'm trying to keep this symmetrical. Now keep in mind that this flag is also at a little bit of an angle. It's sort of tapered downward. So if it's a little bit unsymmetrical, it's okay because it'll just look like the flag is flapping in the wind. So that's kind of why these are forgiving. They don't need to be perfect because they have sort of their own defined shape anyway. And these upper tentacles. 
I sort of wanted them to almost have like a flexing appearance to them. Okay, and then we'll just bring in those little fins along the head. And I'm not gonna worry about the eyes right now, they're kind of a final detail, but they'll be somewhere in that area. Okay, so now we have a really, really basic rough in of sort of the shape we're trying to accomplish. Doesn't look like much right now, but that's okay. Or the next thing we'll wanna do, sort of just clean these lines up now. We basically can just keep painting over this, but we wanna sort of start to give it a more specific shape. And like, don't worry if you make mistakes. Paint can be covered by more paint. I'm using a lot of really short strokes to do this. I don't find I do very proficient long strokes. It comes back to actually, I have fairly shaky hands. So I don't paint in long smooth lines because I don't produce long smooth lines. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing says to be a good painter you have to have a steady hand. It just means you have to learn to deal with your shaky hand. Now this part gets a little interesting because there's actually a fold in the fabric there so my straight lines don't really lay straight. So I'm actually gonna turn and work with the line instead. Okay, so it still looks pretty crummy to be honest, but it's definitely a lot cleaner than it was. Don't be afraid to rotate what you're working on to get the brush movements in a direction that's good for you. I find it's easiest for me to make short up and down motions like I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna move the, basically rotate this so that whatever I'm doing is my strongest stroke. You want to be, if you're best at doing short up and down movements, move what you're painting. So whatever you're doing is a short up and down movement. Don't worry about holding it still and painting up and down. It only matters what it looks like while, or when you're done painting. It doesn't matter what it looks like while you're painting it. Now some of these are a little too thick. Once again, that's definitely okay. We can go back and fix that. Is our solution here to anything we do that we don't like is just to cover it back up with purple paint afterwards. I sort of like to refer to that as the back and forth method of error correcting. Make some mistakes in white, cover them back up in purple. If you cover up too much, go back and add some white back in. And literally just work back and forth until the shape's the way you want it. No one needs to know that's how it worked but you. Okay, so there's our basic rough in. It's not bad right now, it can be a whole lot better, and we're gonna get there. So our next step now is to actually use a little bit of purple and sort of thin out these shapes and get rid of sort of the rough lines. Okay, so we're gonna prepare some purple paint. Same thing we do with the, the white paint. We're just going to mix it with a little flow improver so that it's easier to work with painting these fine lines. I normally recommend thinning paints anytime you're not doing a base coat but it does make the paint flow a little bit better off the brush. Sometimes you can actually thin it too much though and then it ends up going where you don't want it to on the model. Of course, if you thin it a lot, you basically just end up with a wash, which isn't a bad thing, but if that's not what you're going with, it can make it really hard to work. Okay, so there we have our thinned out purple. And what I'm gonna do here is just start to clean up these edges. Make everything look a little more detailed. We might find we wanna reshape these tentacles a little bit. So most of what I'm getting rid of are those original guideline marks we did. So now that we have our rough in, we don't really need them anymore. And you notice that because this thin purple is thinned out, it's not quite covering up the white. White is a pretty potent color and it can be hard to cover. So I kind of mean about the back and forth where this is I'm not solving our problems quite yet. We're actually probably introducing some new errors, but like, I really don't want that little purple dot right there. We'll fix that later.
So if we're doing this on a metal model, I might be a little more careful about how I'm handling it. That's also why this is one of the first details I'm painting, so I'm not rubbing paint off any other areas that we might have already finished. If this were a metal model, the standard would be the last thing we'd probably glue on to. So what I mean by about, it's okay to make mistakes. Mistakes can always be corrected. Only mistake you can't fix when you're painting is buying the wrong model in the first place. Now I think this part of this tentacle is actually too long. I think it's sitting a little lower than it should. So I'm actually just going to cover that right up. We'll repaint that later. Oop, okay. Definitely a mistake there. I covered up way too much tentacle. That's in this tricky spot though where the flag starts to curve. I'm not surprised I made a mistake there. And then I'm just going to keep covering up these areas. Alright, so we've got a fairly decent shape now. Still not perfect. It's not going to be perfect till it's done. But we're going to go ahead now. We're going to let that sit for a few minutes just to dry and then we'll get our white going back in again. To really fill in the areas that we do want white and then reshape these areas where we've either made mistakes or here where I made a complete correction. Okay, so we'll be back in a minute here once that's ready for more painting. Now, by now our white paint the flow improver started to dry and the paint's actually a little bit thicker than it was before. This is actually ideal because it's still thinner than the white paint would be on its own, but now it's going to hold into those areas we've already painted really, really well and just give us the nice vibrant white we want. So we're just going to start by filling in really towards the center of the areas we've been working on. And I'm doing all of this with a 5-0 round brush, often called a spotter. Really, really good for the freehand work when you're doing fine areas and small areas. It comes to a nice point, so you really don't need anything smaller than this. You can see the shape is definitely more defined on this side and the lines are much clearer. Still not perfect, but they're probably a step or two away from being perfect. At least as perfect as we need them to be. This is definitely a tricky spot, right there on the curve. I 
And I'm gonna just fill in down here a little bit, just sort of make those tentacles look more appropriate. We're gonna go back now one more time with the purple just to touch up a few areas, like where I've reshaped this and this. Um, probably do one last little fill with the white because there's a few parts here where I can still see the purple through it. And we're gonna rough in the eyes with the purple this time as well. So let's switch over to purple. You can see our purple, still pretty runny. That's about where we want it because we just wanna do some thin corrections with it. And I'm just gonna clean our brush before we keep moving. Or my brush. Basically, I'm just touching up anywhere we can see a little bit of white that we shouldn't. Specifically, where we've touched things up before and just didn't get a very good coverage. And I'm going to go ahead and rough in the eyes. And we'll fix that up with some white here in a second. I'm just going to add some extra little detail here too. I'm going to put four little dots running up the center of his forehead. Just like that. Those are pretty much good. We can leave them alone. Definitely need to reshape the eyes. I did a terrible job there. So we're going to switch back to white and just give them some better definition. much better shape already. Now this one tentacle here I think is a little thin so we're going to just thicken it out a little bit. That's much better. Now the eyes are a little off-center. I'm not really thrilled about that. So to fix that, we're actually just going to move this sort of inside bit over and we'll thin this eye up. And there, that kind of recenters them now. They're still a little bit off. But keep in mind, this is a flag that's flapping in the wind. Things don't need to be exactly perfectly aligned because they wouldn't look that way anyway because you wouldn't ever catch a glimpse of it all properly lined up. But if something just looks plain off, you need to fix that.
All right, now that is basically done. Only thing I want to finish up is there's sort of this webbing type stuff between the different fins. So I want that at least in here symbolically. Not necessarily I want to paint all of it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try and outline it. I'm just going to make some little sweeping lines between the tips here. Give them a little bit of a curve. Now this is the big one right here. And now our standard is done. We could add a little bit of detail, maybe out to the corners, something in like a script of some type, but there's really nothing more we need on here. That is a pretty awesome standard. You can see it actually does bear a pretty good resemblance to this decorative piece up top. That's really all there is to it. That's free handing standards. Now here's a similar standard I completed just a few days ago. And you can see it looks fairly similar. The only real key difference is that I've highlighted the folds of the fabric using a lighter purple just to give it a more wavy look to really just make that stand out. It's not necessary because the folds do create a fair bit of their own natural shadow, but it does just help it stand out a little bit more on the table.